Good morning, children. This is lecture four of chapter surface chemistry. In this lecture, we will study about the properties, coagulation, protection of colloidal state, emulsion, surfactants, and applications of colloids. The properties of colloidal solutions may be classified as general properties, optical properties, mechanical properties, and electrical properties. General properties of colloidal solutions. The first is coming colligative properties. Now, colloidal solutions exhibit colligative properties such as osmotic pressure, lowering of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression in boiling point. As you know, all these are the colligative properties. These are shown by colloidal solutions also, but to a smaller order as compared to the true solutions. And why it is in the smaller order as compared to the true solution? Because the number of particles in colloidal solution is less as compared to the true solution due to agglomeration and clustering. Next is coming color. Now, colloidal solution exhibits color corresponding to the wavelength of light that gets scattered by the particle. It changes with the size of the particle. Am I clear? The, it, is, it is exhibiting color correspond, corresponding to the wavelength of the light which gets scattered by the particles of the colloidal solution. It is depending upon the size of the particle. Next is optical properties. Colloidal solution is showing optical properties. In this optical properties, Tyndall effect is coming. Now, colloidal solutions exhibit Tyndall effect as observed in true solution. Now, what is Tyndall effect? If a homogeneous solution is viewed in the direction of light, it looks clear. But if viewed from a direction perpendicular to the direction of light, it looks darker. This is known as Tyndall effect. Now for colloidal solution also this Tyndall effect is visible. When viewed in the direction of the light it looks reasonably clear and translucent but when viewed from a direction perpendicular to the passage of the light it shows mild to strong opalescence. Tyndall effect depends on size of colloidal particles and the refractive indices of dispersed phase and dispersed dispersion medium. Next is coming mechanical properties. Bryanian movement is coming under these mechanical properties. When colloidal particles are viewed under a powerful microscope, they appear to move randomly. And you know that when the particles of a solution is moving randomly, this is known as Brownian movement. Now, why this is happening with the colloidal solution? Because the collision between the colloidal particle and the molecule of the dispersion medium is giving rise to the Brownian movement. And what happened? This collision do not allow the particles to come close enough so that they do not get agglomerated and hence they maintain the colloidal suspension. Charge on colloidal particles. Colloidal particles carry an electrical charge which may be positive or negative but same on all the particles. See here this example some example is uh, given here charge on particles of some common salts. Positively charged salts the examples are hydrated metallic oxide for example Al2O3 dot XH2. CrO3 dot XH2, Fe2O3 dot XH2, they all these metallic oxide, hydrated metallic oxide, 
they are showing positively charged so they are known as positively charged salts similarly negatively charged salts metal particles for example gold silver copper salts now basic dyes like methylene blue salts they are also showing positively charged salts now metallic sulfide for example as2s3 sb2s3 cds salts they all are negatively charged salts hemoglobin in blood it is positively charged salt and acidic dyes like eosin congo red salts okay they are negatively charged salts oxide for example tio2 salts they are positively charged salts and salts of starch gum gelatin clay charcoal they all are negatively charged salts electrophoresis the movement of colloidal particles under the application of an electric field is called electrophoresis why this is happening this happens due to the charge on the colloidal particles as i already told you that the colloidal particles colloidal solutions are carrying some charge is having a charge so because of the charge present on the colloidal particles this electrophoresis is happening when electric potential is applied across the plat to platinum electrodes dipped in the colloidal solution the see here the figure the platinum two platinum electrodes dips dipped into the colloidal solution that is as to as3 sol we have taken the particles move towards one or the other electrode depending upon the charge on it here in this example we have taken as to as3 sol and we know that it is a negatively charged sol we have already discussed it in the previous slide because of the negatively charged sol the particles will move towards the positive electrode okay coagulation of colloids the stability of lyophobic salts is due to the mutual repulsion between the colloidal particles but suppose you are destroying the charge by some means then what will happen the particles will come close to each other and eventually form agglomerates and settle down under the force due to gravity now this process of settling down of colloidal particles is known as coagulation now this coagulation may be obtained by some methods the first one is by adding electrolyte when an electrolyte is added in the colloidal solution then what will happen the charged colloidal particles get attracted to the opposite charge of the electrolyte and in this way the particles of the colloidal solution become neutral and as they will become neutral as they become neutral they come close to each other and they coagulate and settle down next method for the coagulation of colloid is by boiling on boiling the colloidal solution what will happen the number of collisions increase because of this increased collisions the adsorbed surface charge layer gets disturbed and this reduction in charge leads to eventual coagulation the next method is by electrophoresis the colloidal particles migrate towards the oppositely charged electrodes just now we have discussed this and get discharged 
and precipitated. Next is by persistent dialysis. Now prolonged dialysis removes even traces of electrolyte. Okay, and which makes the colloidal suspension unstable and ultimately coagulate. The last one by mixing oppositely charged colloids. When colloidal salts of opposite charges are mixed in equal proportion, you are mixing another colloidal salts, but opposite charge, oppositely charged colloidal solutions, if you are mixing, then they combine and neutralize each other and get partially or completely accumulated. Protection of colloids. Lyophilic salts are more stable than lyophobic salts. Why? Because in lyophilic salts, the particles are extensively solvated. Lyophilic means solvent loving. So there is a bond exists between the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium. But for the lyophobic salts, they are solvent hating. Okay, so there is always a repulsion between the dispersion phase, dispersion medium and the dispersed phase. Okay, but the molecules present in the dispersed phase, there is also a repulsion exists between them because they are having the same charge. So, the colloidal state is maintaining. Now, to protect is, protect this, from coagulation, lyophilic salts can act, if you add some lyophilic salts to it, it can act as a stability en enhancer. Why? How it will be? Because lyophilic salts are having an attraction towards the solvent. So, that lyophilic salts make a protective layer cover over the lyophobic particles and protect them from the destabilizing electrolytes with opposite charge. Okay, it is protecting them from getting destabilized, destabilizing. Next is gold number. What is gold number? Gold number is the minimum number of milligrams of lyophilic salts required to protect 10 milliliter of gold salt by the addition of 1 ml of 10% NaCl. It's called gold number. What does it mean? Suppose you are having a salts, colloidal solution. In that, if you are giving 1 milliliter of 10% NaCl solution, it is becoming destabilized a little bit. Now, to stabilize it, how much amount of, what is the minimum number of milligram of lyophilic salts? Gold is a lyophilic salt. So, the minimum number of milligram of lyophilic salt required to protect 10 ml of gold sol that is known as gold number. 10 ml of gold sols add 1 ml of 10% NaCl. It will, it stabilize stability a little bit. It will disturb. Stability will disturb a little bit. Now, you have to add a lyophilic sol to it to stabilize it. Now, what is the minimum number of milligram of lyophilic salts required to protect 10 ml of gold salts by the addition of 1 ml of 10% NaCl is called gold number. Now, protective power is the reciprocal of gold number. Okay. Emulsions. A colloidal system where both dispersed phase and the dispersion medium are liquid. 
where both dispersed phase and the dispersion medium are liquids is called emulsion when two immiscible or partially immiscible liquids are shaken droplets of one liquid get dispersed into the other liquid and it causes it forms an emulsion there are two types of emulsion one is oil immersed in water that is known as o w oil immersed in water type oil is mixed with water that acts as a dispersion medium okay example milk vanishing cream etc second is water dispersed in oil that is wo type water acts as dispersed phase here and oil acts as dispersion medium example is butter and cream emulsifying agent or emulsifier what is emulsifying agent and emulsifier for both oil water and water oil type a stabilizer is needed to make the emulsion stable example of emulsifying agent for oil water protein gums natural and synthetic soaps etc and water oil emulsion lamp black heavy metal salts or fatty acids long chain alcohols these are the examples of emulsifying agent applications of emulsions emulsions are useful in number of ways some of the examples are given below milk is an emulsion of liquid fats in water asphalt emulsified in water may be used for building roads without the necessity to melt it in mineral beneficiation principle of froth frotation is based on mixing powdered ore with oil emulsions valuable part of the ore comes up as froth which is skimmed out the gang settle at the bottom several oily drugs are made usable as emulsions cleansing action of soap is based on the principle of forming oil in water emulsion soap acts as an interfacial stabilizer the digestion of fats in the intestine takes place through the process of emulsification next is coming surfactants surfactants are the substances that get preferentially adsorbed at air water oil water solid water interfaces forming an oriented monolayer surfactants have a polar group attached at one end and a non polar hydrocarbon group attached at the other end actually it is a long chain hydrocarbon and at one end of this a polar group is attached now this polar group is hydrophilic and this hydrocarbon part that is a non polar part is hydrophobic now this hydrophilic polar group is attached to the aqueous phase that is it is attached with the water it's get attached with the water and the non polar part that gets attached to the oil or air surfactants are of two types one is anionic surfactants cationic surfactants and non ionic surfactants anionic surfactants sodium salt of higher fatty acid such as sodium palmitate the formula is c15 h31 co minus na plus now this c15 h31 this part is the non polar part and this is the polar part this part is the lyophilic and this part is lyophobic 
Now the lyophilic part is getting attached with the aqueous part and this lyophobic part is getting attached with the oil or air. Sodium stearate formula is C17 H35 CWNA sodium oleate C17 H33 CWNA these are the anionic surfactants anionic surfactants produce negative charge when dissolved in water cationic surfactants these are surfactants which produce positively charged ions when dissolved in water such as octadecyl ammonium chloride this is the formula cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide this is the formula cetyl pyridinium chloride this is the formula these all are the example of cationic surfactant non ionic surfactant non ionic surfactants are those whose molecules do not undergo dissociation do not undergo dissociation when dissolved in water when an alcohol having a higher molar mass reacts with several molecules of ethylene oxide a non ionic surfactant is produced technical applications of colloids in water purification alum used for purifying water coagulates the colloidal suspension of impurities present in water preparation of medicines most of the liquid medicines are made in the form of colloids production of latex latex is a colloidal solution of rubber particles which are negatively charged rubber is obtained by coagulation of latex tanning animal hides are colloidal in nature when a hide is brought in contact with tannin comprising negatively charged particles leather hardens due to coagulation this process is called tanning natural application of colloids blue color of the sky dust particles and moisture dispersed in air acts as colloids with scattered blue light giving the sky a blue color food articles food articles such as butter milk ice cream are colloids fog and mist fog and mist are colloids where condensed moisture on the dust particle from the fine droplets floating in air clouds these are aerosols in which small droplets of water are suspended in air fertile soils in fertile soil humus acts as a protective colloid which helps in absorbing moisture nourishing material formation of delta river water is a colloidal solution of clay and sea water contains electrolytes when these two meet colloids coagulate and deposit eventually forming the delta blood is a colloidal solution of an albuminated substance technical applications of colloids electrical precipitation of smoke smoke is a colloidal suspension of solid particles of carbon and metallic compounds in air electrical smoke precipitator this is the electrical smoke precipitator is a gadget where smoke is allowed to pass see from here smoke is allowed to pass through two electrodes during the passage colloidal particle loses their charge and they coagulate and gravitate and the smoke free air is released in the environment
and this is the diagram for the gadget. Cleansing of soap. Soaps and detergents clean the oily surface through formation of micelles. Photography. Photographic plate has a coating of light sensitive silver bromide emulsion in gelatin. And industrial use, colloids have a wide range of technical applications on natural rubber, paints, inks, synthetic fiber, etc. Now with this, we end the chapter on surface chemistry here. Please go through the videos properly, learn it and then consult the book for your better understanding.